Hello everyone and welcome to iReddit bringing you your daily dose of the internet for Tuesday, June 6, 2017. I am Michael Schwan. And I'm Nathan Wood. Please remember everybody, you can help support our show by going to patreon.com slash daily internet. Nathan, how are you doing today? I'm so goddamn tired. You, seriously, sleep more. I did! Fuck off! Eat more? I don't have food. You have to have money to have food. Get your roommates to get a job. That's impossible. Move out. That's also impossible. False. Jesus Christ. That is quite false. Other than that, how was your day? Uh, I don't remember it. I was really sleepy all day, so I kind of just winked out. That's not good. It happens. Are you even sure you, like, did work stuff today? I think- I was at the front counter, so I'd hope I did. <laughs> just- just looked at people? Next. Stamp. Next. Exactly. That's exactly what I did. Their friggin' paperwork starts looking like tortillas. Oh, man. The worst is you can smell the- the basement sometimes from a, on the first floor. Mm-hmm. And it smells like delicious, delicious food. Is Henry still running the basement? No. No? No. Damn. New management. Was Henry there when you started? I th no. No? Wait. He might be there then. I don't know. Henry was a tiny little woman. No. Okay. That's disappointing because Henry was wonderful and awesome. No, we got a black dude. No. Yeah. Well then. Too bad. Mm-hmm. So, uh, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to the show. It's episode 300. Uh, we talked yesterday about possibly doing something special, but uh, we ran out of time and didn't have any ideas, so. Yeah. Whoops. <laughs> and, and Nathan's dead anyway, so. Uh, I just want to sleep. I can't even go to sleep after the podcast. It's the worst. Why can't you? Because I have other shit I gotta do. Like? Uh, pay rent that's like six days late. Mm. Well then, does that take that much time? You would be surprised. Why? Because we have to go and meet up with someone because someone owes one of my roommates money, and then from there we have to run to a bank that closes at 8. Oh boy. Yeah. Well, I wish you luck, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go ahead and get into some stuff. Ten. <laughs> Steve Harvey's new show, Thunderdome, gets leaked. No one downloads it. <laughs> this was submitted by Hell Yep to R, not The Onion. Yeah. It's because they fucking canceled BattleBots for this shit. Well, and also, like, come on, seriously, Thunderdome? Dude, fuck this thing. We need goddamn BattleBots back on there. We were supposed to have a new season. Yeah, so the Dark Overlord, which is a hacking group behind the Orange of the New Black leak, uh, they stole this content somehow and then asked for ransom from ABC. ABC said no. They leaked it out. It went on all the torrent sites, and no, no, no one downloaded it. I'm going to download it. Are you? I think last time I went to go download something, a lot of the torrent sites were already down. Well, and I'll, the other, you might have trouble finding someone with this because most of the torrent sites that have it have hey, like. Hey, 23 seeds. Wow, I'm amazed. Oh, uh, this 8 gig thing is going to take literal decades. Probably. But, uh, yeah. I, I don't even know what the show is about, and I doubt it's very fun. What's wrong? Yeah, no, I, I doubt it. Something weird on my computer popped up. Oh, okay. I was yeah, okay, confused. Yeah, I, I just have this feeling that, nope, it, it, like, mm. Yeah. Why does every episode, oh, God, I hate people like this. What's wrong? Every single episode is packaged into a separate folder inside the season one folder. Well, that's the fucking worst. Why would you do this? Because this is I'm already downloading absolute garbage. Don't make me download more. Too bad. Get used to it, son. Oh, I mean, I'm not downloading things illegally. Like, I mean, Steve Harvey's show, Steve Harvey, didn't do well. And the only reason that he did all right on Family Feud is because Family Feud was already an established show. That and his reactions are kind of gold. That's true. Yeah. 
I don't I don't know enough about Thunderdome to know if he'll still have that like going for him, but I get the feeling that he won't. Oh no. After after this, they'll probably cancel it after this first season. Probably. Uh it's only gonna take me four hours. Whatever. Whatever. That's alright. I've got American Gods I have to watch. I've got John Wick two I have to watch. I've never seen John Wick one. That is seriously the worst thing I've ever heard. Oh yeah? Dude, you would love it. A man goes on a killing rampage because someone kills his puppy. Oh, I know the story. I don't understand how you haven't watched it yet. I don't know. Lack it's got literally everything you like in it. Y you know how there's shitloads of things that you don't care about? I don't understand because it has literally everything you like in it. But I don't care. I don't... You're literally the worst. Thanks, buddy. I, I, I'll even watch shit that I don't care about just because. But I, I, I care For about... For instance, Thunderdome. You're, you see that I feel like that makes you the worst. No, it doesn't because you'll watch something that you don't give a shit about and you'll find it completely gold half of the time. Instead, I will choose to make better use of my time. I don't understand because everyone's literally I have not heard a negative review about John Wick. I'll give you one. I don't know. It's probably a great movie. Exactly. I I could probably find something to nitpick, but I don't care enough. See? There you go. Anywho. Nine. National security experts were floored by the leaked National Security Administration document on Russian's election hack. This was submitted by sending signal to our politics. So this uh, this new document that was leaked out, uh, it basically shows that days before the election, Russia targeted multiple um, software production. Fuck, what was the word? Oh, no, I'm ruining everything. Anywhere, targeted, targeted a bunch of software agencies that were part of managing the election, as well as tried to spearfish a bunch of officials. Wait, so they actually tried to hack? Yeah, totally did. And All right, what's spearfishing? I already know what actual spearfishing is. So spear spearfishing is where you... It, instead of like bulk emails that you hope that someone clicks on, it's very targeted, specific, like curated for who you're targeting. So instead of like, I'll just send this to 15,000 people and maybe two of them will click on it and I'll get to hack them. You curate it towards the person that you're hacking so that there's an extremely increased chance that you'll get to hack them because they'll click on something. That's fucked up. It is. You're like, don't open this email. Haha, <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> Well, in some um, hacking, some virus stuff, you don't even have to open the email anymore. If you don't have a good enough email service, just receiving the email because of the pre-scan that the service does, like what you know, how you'll see the little preview uh, before you actually open the email, can run the virus. Yeah, the uh, when when we get we get frequently emails at work saying, "Hey, don't open this email at all." Because someone's trying to hack us. Except that you get those emails like three or four days after the the hack email, and you're like, oh, well, that's that's already way too late there, guys. Yeah. Either way, it does look like the Russians made an actual attempt to hack into the U.S. voting software because the people that they targeted were the U.S. voting software suppliers. Oh. So the people that, you know, bring the carts out to do the friggin' uh that set up the stuff. machines. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not been any response to this whatsoever in terms of what this means, what it could mean, what we're going to do, what Trump's reaction is, nothing. We just know that it happened. So we're literally going to do nothing about it. We are not doing anything about it right now. There has been no, no official response from any government officials regarding the matter. Well, because it, it wasn't supposed to be released to the public. No. Huh. Eight gunshots at Paris's Notre Dame. This was submitted by Hello NPC to Our World News. So, this guy walks up to a police officer right outside of the Notre Dame Cathedral and shouts, "This is for Syria!" and starts beating the officer with a hammer. And then the other officer turns and shoots him. Yep, and that's how that story ends. And literally that. Yep, that's the. whole whole story gunshots at paris's notre dame by motherfucking police yep the and the the fucking police officer didn't even have any serious injuries nope he's all right 
No, he's fine. They just shot some dude trying to hurt some guy. Mm -hmm. Well, technically the guy was a police officer, but still, you shouldn't be hurting people. I am so hungry right now that I am drinking milk to hope that it abates my hunger. I can't even do that. I'm sorry. Like, the the most literally the most I have right now is some shitty Indian pale ale. Ow. I'm real sorry, buddy. Do you want to come and, over? And straight gin. Nothing but straight gin. You want to come over? No, I have shit I have to do. Damn. Okay. Well, either way. Um, the, the reason that this is such a big deal is because Paris has been under a state of emergency since 2015. And this does nothing to help that. So, but... Uh, I wish you luck, Paris. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I it's it's hard over there in Europe. And I I feel like a lot of Americans don't understand cuz they're like, "Oh, we don't have that over in America." Yes, we fucking do. Well, it's so easy to not understand when you're so disconnected from it. I we have more murders in California in a month than all of France in a month. That's very true. What is the population of France, by the way? Population of France. How many people live there? 66.81 million population of California is 39.14 million. So, I mean, California is right around, like, what? Two-thirds? 60%, 66%, yeah. Two-thirds, yeah. Yeah. So, like, the thing, though, I feel, is they're a lot closer to the Middle East, and it's a lot easier once you cross the border into Europe to go literally throughout Europe. Yeah, you just keep walking. Like, there's the, the, and it, I'm not saying that's a bad thing. No, it's a pretty open policy, and it's really nice. But at the same time, it does allow stuff like this to happen. Mm -hmm. There's more people in California than there are in Canada. Interesting. Calif so if, if California gets annexed to Canada, they double in size? More than double. Oh, that's fucking hilarious. Uh, there's 7 million in Washington. And 4 million in Oregon. So, B, they, they, they would about time and a half their population if they took the... There's only 4 million in Oregon and just south there's 39 million? Yeah. Holy shit. Yep. That amazes me. Los Angeles alone has four million people. Shit, Nebraska probably has like six. Just just six? Just six. Uh, population of Nebraska, 1.9. Yeah, I was really close. There's there's like one and almost another dude. 1.9 million. Oh, you should be more fucking specific. I'm pretty sure we have the least. Alaska with 738,000. Uh, maybe Rhode Island. Nope, Rhode Island beats us. They got dude. over a million. Yeah, no, dude. <laughs> That's all right. We got plenty of beautiful, beautiful land that we can do nothing um, with. Nice hiking and outdoor activities, and absolutely nothing with. We can do plenty with it. You're just not opening your mind. Seven. A group representing 6.2 trillion dollars of the United States economy says that they are still in the Paris Climate Agreement. This is submitted by Wagga Maga to our Futurology. So this is a bunch of big companies from Apple to Amazon, Google, Lyft, Spotify, as well as several mayors and governors across the United States that said, screw you, Trump. We're going to follow along with the Paris Agreement anyway. And um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting because I, I wonder if this might have been part of Trump's plan of Trump pulling out of the Paris Agreement so that the United States federal government wa wasn't at such a burden because it does move a lot of the burden to the private sector, which means that a lot of the country is still going to be executing the Paris Agreement, but it's not going to be costing the United States itself money. That's good. Kind of. I mean... There I mean, so it's kind of shitty because, like, the American government should probably be paying for some of this shit, too. Right. They, and they, they should be supporting Paris climate agreement. change. Yeah. Um, I'm, full, I'm full Paris agreement. But, like, 
No, I can't even I can't even argue against it. Like I don't see a, a problem with us paying money towards the Paris Agreement because it's money out of the pockets of Americans. Well, and I mean, I'm not going to be sad if fucking people like Amazon, Google, and Apple want to pay some of the bill because, good Lord Jesus. Holy shit. Yeah, good Lord Jesus. I mean, Apple and Google are the two most valuable companies in the world, so... I feel like if we just ask them for things like this, they would totally be down. Maybe. Well, they're kind of down anyway, and they're going to just prove... The, the other thing is, is like as much as it, a lot of it, it, like it's really good PR for them as well. Right. Like they, we, we hate to admit that we're in debt because we're Americans. This is our pride. But it's okay to borrow money sometimes. So, funny thing, Apple recently had its worldwide development it's conference, inside right? Inside of the country. Yeah. And one of the things they announced at that was this sick new feature for the friggin' iPads. And it's literally just Windows folders. Like, you can have, a, you can have like, a normal, like, an MP3 file on the screen instead of having it to have to be in something. Like, it has, it literally functions like a desktop now. And I'm like... <laughs> they finally reached it. <laughs> they get what full circle? No. What? They weren't progressive. <laughs> they finally reached where Windows is. <laughs> like now on your phone, no, but on your iPad, yes. And I'm like, okay, you. Well, not even, not even. On those phones? No. Nope. You can't do it on there? No, it's just... Shit, I've got folders that come pre-made into my phone. <laughs> right, I know. Like I when... have a whole folder for Google. <laughs> like, I had a friend that was so excited to tell me about this crazy advancement that Apple's doing, and I'm like, you realize that's literally what Windows has had for the last 30 years, right? Like, it's literally just... That's a win... plus 30 years. It's just a desktop. Like, okay. Okay. Yay! Yay! Desktop, guys! <laughs> I was like, I mean... Apple's getting them too, bitches! I mean, I'm, I'm glad because... Oh, I... but they're different, right? They have a different kind of, like, XY coordinates, so instead... They're inverted, so instead of pulling your mouse down, they pull it up. Please tell me you're fucking joking. <laughs> I am. Okay, because, like, that sounded like something that was stupid enough for Apple to do, so... <laughs> We really want to get in touch with the aeronautics side of Apple, so everything's been inverted. Although, Windows, I know you're not listening, but I just need to have a conversation with you real quick about the stupid-ass fucking way that you organize and select icons on the desktop. You organize items when you sort them vertically, so like things go in succession downward. Whoever, if you want to select multiple of them, it selects them horizontally, like a page. <laughs> I was going to say, going up and down is not bad. Like, that's how Japanese writing is. No, no, that's fine. Except for if you're like, oh, I'm going to shift click all these. And it goes, oh, take these three lines, like horizontal rows instead of the columns that we sorted them in. Fuck you, Microsoft. The hell. Like... <laughs> And it's been that way for a decade. What's wrong with you? I, I don't know, man. Maybe sort it yourself. I, fuck you. Across the top. No. Drag. Okay, so here's an, an easy an easy fix to that, right? You click just outside of the one that you want, and you drag it to the ones that you want. Here's the problem with that. If it takes up more than one column then it doesn't sync up very well, and you're gonna get just, extra shit. Just keep going to the side. Until you've Six. got it. Muslim man saves 64 Christians from being executed by militants in the Philippines. This was submitted by Pazaj to Our World News. Yep, so we had recently talked about the attacks that happened in Marawi. Um, apparently a large number of those attacks were targeting Christians. Um, some... And uh, they, they were running for their friggin' lives. And this gentleman... What, I mean, that's what extremists do. They, they target their opposite. I suppose, yeah. So they apparently nearly 240 Christians have been kidnapped and held hostage since the beginning of the conflict more than a week ago. Um, but a lot of them have found shelter, including this man who has hidden 64 people. 
They like all right. So apparently the people really respect him, so he's used that to have them not search his house. That's cool. And because of that, he's been hoarding. Um, he's been hoarding Christians, and I think that's really cool. Good on you, guy. Mm -hmm. Like that, the, the the amount of risk that he is taking for people that he doesn't know is pretty wonderful. Or I mean, even if he might know them, like off to the side. Yeah. It, it's still like it, they they would just kill him. So, yeah, just fucking dead. yeah. So thank you, good sir. But he could like he, they respected him so much. They were like, yeah, dude, if you want to walk out like right now, go ahead. And he's like, no, nah, that's fine. I'll just stay here. No, I'm fine. And like, and they're like radical. <laughs> Sweet dude, awesome. Hang out. Get get it. Radical. Yeah, yeah, I get it. You're the worst. It's a pun. Uh, Five. Trump schedule speech during Comey testimony. This was submitted by Throwaway5272 to our politics. The White House is scrambling as hard as it can to figure out a way to just offport any any potential damage that the Comey testimony might have, including there are organizations around the country, such as the Great American Alliance, which is a pro-Trump organization, that has opened up this commercial that talks about how Comey is, 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 is a showboater and how he was consumed with election meddling instead of focusing on combating terrorism. And they're airing that today, tomorrow, and the day of the testimony, literally running a slander campaign like he was a candidate about this dude who's just going to go give a testimony about the Russia investigation. No, no, it's not even about the Russia investigation. Excuse me. It's literally about, hey, what did you and Trump talk about? Uh, did Trump ask you to not investigate Russia? Because that's obstruction of justice. So it, did anything bad happen? Dude, at this point, it has to be. And, uh... Like, all right. Like, how... If you were, if you were doing so much... To try and make sure people discredit a man who's about to talk about you, which he may not even say anything bad at all, mm -hmm. then something fucked up along that way, and you you should probably be worried. Yeah. And that's, this is what exactly, this is signs of worry. You're raising so much suspicion right now. Yeah, you're just like, instead of playing it cool, you're just like, oh, holy Fuck, I, I gotta do something, even though nothing went wrong, if that's your viewpoint. Yep, and I, I mean, the thing is, though, stuff like this will work. I mean, a Trump speech will pull viewers away from wherever the testimony is being aired. The commercials will air in front of uninformed people, and it will work, is the craziest thing. That makes me sad. Yep. But politics. Four. Four top law firms turned down requests to represent Trump. Submitted by Shyla T to our politics. So Trump has been going around trying to find someone to represent him in the Russia investigation. But the four best law firms in America have said no. That's insane. One saying that dude, they had scheduling conflicts. Another one saying that there was a conflict of interest based on clients that they already have. And two basically saying, not touching that. Man. Yeah, no, I can understand. There's a barrel of fucking worms that a lot of people think he's just going to lose. You well, don't want your name tagged on to the losing side. Well, and also, well, I mean, some lawyers don't care because normally in situations like this, they set it up so they get paid regardless of what happens. Fair. Um, so right now they've been using um, his chief lawyer that's been on retainer, Mark E. Kasowitz, and he's represented Trump in a lot of like business and public relation disputes. But those are a matter of like civil things, right? Whereas this is... Congress congressional and Justice Department investigations, which Kasowitz doesn't have a large amount of experience in, so it it works completely differently. So your they, tactics and they one need way, to find a law firm that's able to do that that supports Trump. Well, or there you, you know, go. is greedy enough to accept it. Yeah, so they'd probably support Trump. Yeah, <laughs> damn. That I, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't even know enough about how congressional and Justice Department cases carry themselves out because in 
it, it's not the same as like trying to convince a jury that they did nothing wrong. Yeah, you. It's, it's so much different than that. Instead, it's a grand jury. I I think it's actually more like the Supreme Court. I don't know. I don't know enough about it. All I know I mean, is no they're, one. They're like a jury, really, just of judges. All I know is no one wants to touch it. No one wants to be in the room. Yeah, everyone's like, that's a big old ball of no. Except, except for the people who are like, let's get him out of here. <laughs> or the people that are like, ah, oh, crap, I can't leave now. Mm -hmm. uh, I swore my ever-loving loyalty to the God Emperor, and if I leave, I die. Exactly. Three. Stephen Hawking announces he is voting Labor. This was submitted for Mania for Beatles to Our World News. So, I didn't even realize he was British. Yep. The snap election for the UK Prime Minister, as well as several of the House of Parliament seats, is going to be occurring in two days on June 8th. And Stephen Hawking has came out to announce that he's going to be backing Jeremy Corbyn, who is the member for the Labour Party. He believes that the Conservatives would be a disaster for the NHS, the police, and other public serv services, and that they have just done a shitty job up to this point anyway. Now, he... <laughs> he... He is not the most proud of Jeremy Corbyn, also calling Corbyn a disaster, saying that his heart is in the right place and many of his policies are sound, but he has allowed himself to be portrayed as a left-wing extremist. Mm -hmm. But he's going to support him anyway because he believes that he will take the United Kingdom in the right direction. Hmm. That's cool. I don't know much about their snap election. Well, okay. I know about their snap election. I don't know much about their politics over there. I know that there's Tories. I know that there's Labour. Conservatives. Conservatives, yeah. Green Party. Mm-hmm. Uh, Constitution Party. Yeah. I haven't heard of those ones, but sure. <laughs> there, there's a lot of them. but There's just more parties than we'd have. Yep. Which means you get and more choices. Shit, I haven't watched a movie on Stephen Hawking. I, don't, I didn't know about it. You know what I'm, I'm, I'm actually pretty curious about? Mm. I, and I don't know if there's an actual like case study on it or not. How much of a difference public endorsements actually make in terms of votes cast in that so so like for instance a debate the way that you win a debate is everyone comes in says who they're voting for or if they're undecided and then when they leave they retake the poll whoever had the most change or whatever is the victor right mm -hmm. when it comes to public endorsements so you know like Stephen Hawking saying I'm going to vote for you know the Labour Party or you know Katy Perry being like I'm going to vote for Hillary Clinton or I'm, Ted Nugent saying, I'm going to kill Obama. I, I'm curious how much of a difference those actually make. I feel I feel with some of them it does. For instance, like, I probably would not have voted for the, uh, the Green Party if it wasn't for Viggo Mortensen endorsing them. Sure. And I, I feel like certain people might be a bit more important, like who the current president endorses normally makes a pretty big difference because it's a large statement. But I mean, and while Stephen Hawking's, a, a, you know, a big name, I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes. I don't know. I feel like since he's made a name for himself for being really fucking smart. Sure. Some people are going to be like, whoa, dude. That really fucking smart dude is going to vote for that guy. I want to be really fucking smart. Let's do it. Maybe. Two. Net neutrality. Uh, um, this is submitted by O'Rari to our news. Let's talk about this some more. So Amazon, among a whole bunch of other top internet firms, are planning on really taking the fight to the FCC when it comes to net neutrality, including a, a large day of, like, trying to gain the attention of the world. July 12th, so next month, is the internet-wide day of action to save net neutrality. There is a link in the show notes, and I'm going to go ahead and drop it into the chat room as well right now um, for anyone that would like to sign up for this. Because what it is, is it is a bunch of companies and individuals that are getting together to fight against the FCC for net neutrality because, yeah... It, it's really bad if you lose net neutrality, not necessarily for us as the consumer, but it gives the ISPs control over who gets access to what. They could, like, for instance, this website that I just linked to, battleforthenet.com, 
if Comcast didn't like them because of what the message is, Comcast can literally just turn off access to this website. And then at that point, we're no better than Korea. Yeah, and, and that's... North. North. And also, like we talked about before, Hulu and Netflix. Netflix goes, yeah, we got awesome speed. And Hulu's like, why don't we have any speed? And Comcast goes, well, if you give us a billion dollars, we'll put put your speed back up to maximum. And they can hold speeds on, on a hostage, essentially. Yeah, and that's not Ransom. okay. So a bunch of... A bunch of Entities such as Fight for the Future, Media Justice, Demand Progress, Amazon, Etsy, Kickstarter, Mozilla, Vimeo, GitHub, Reddit, BitTorrent, uh, who else is in here that matters? Uh, DreamHost. Um, BitTorrent. Uh, I can understand why BitTorrent would want net neutrality. Yeah, right? Patreon. Uh, I just want people to know, torrenting things is not illegal. What you torrent is normally <laughs> illegal. What you torrent is completely illegal if you do not own a, a copy of it or have been given permission by the the well, uh, and, and owner of the thing. Also, the whole owning a copy of a thing doesn't always actually work in terms of legal protection. It just helps. Yeah. Um, I know there is this... Oh, fuck, I can't remember the name of the game. There's an MMO that I played for a while with my uncle where you had to download it through a torrent website. Interesting. Um, cool. Also, like the American Civil Liberties Union is in here, the Media Alliance. There's a lot of names that are being added to this, and more continue to add their name to it. If you want, go to that website, give them your, your name and email, and they'll send you some information about how to actually contribute to this movement. Net neutrality is really important, and we need to make sure that people are aware of that. Yeah, definitely. Because internet. What the FCC.com was it? Right? Uh, no, go FCC yourself .com. That's right. Go FCC yourself. Although I'm not sure if that's still a thing anymore. Uh, go FCC yourself dot com. Does this still go to where? Uh, dun, dun, dun. It does. Still good. Nice. Okay. Good. Excellent. One. Rest in peace, Peter Salas, the voice of Wallace and Gromit. This was submitted by Release the Pressure to our movies. 98 years old. God. Well, I mean, at least at least he was 98. Like, holy fuck. Right? 98? Was that it? 96, I'm sorry. That's insane. Yep. I would never be able to live that long. Liz That's not true. I, I, guess, I guess with modern technology and it getting even more mo modern. Yeah. Who knows, Nathan? You might live forever. Oh, please, for the love of everything, no. Life gets better eventually uh, after you suffered enough. I had um, I had a fucking what? What are they? Um, Jehovah's Witnesses come to my door uh, like a month ago. How'd that go? I asked them because uh, I was genuinely curious how they felt about uh, Russian persecution. Yeah. Um, and they, I mean, they, they responded with, oh, no, this is, it's not good, and it's already being appealed in the Russian Supreme Courts, and here's a pamphlet that talks about God and how we feel. So I took the pamphlet, and I didn't read it. Um, and then, and then they were like, one, they came back to my door this last weekend. Um, and, <laughs> and, uh, one of them was talking to me about, um, my views on the afterlife. And I was like, "Oh no, I'm uh, no, I'm I'm pretty atheistic, and I find comfort in the fact that after this, there's literally nothing, and we just go to avoid." And how did they and, respond? <laughs> and they were like, "Well, I, we understand. We get people like that all the time, but you know what? Here's this passage on, on in the Bible about how the Bible is is the thing that will cheer everybody up." And um, and on top of that, we have this article here about this guy who is a tech techie, in, and he was atheistic, and and he converted to to Jehovah's Witnesses, and and we just want to give you this pamphlet so that you can read through it and just really think about it. And I'm like, that's that's really cool. And they're like, so you you really find comfort in the fact that there's nothing? <laughs> and you're like, yes. And I was like, dude, I would find more comfort, or I find more comfort in the fact that there's nothing compared to if there was something else, because then I would have to worry about that shit. I, actually... I would much rather die and not go to hell. Just saying. I, I actually really enjoy the... 
I, I don't know what to call them because they're not always Jehovah's Witnesses. Sometimes it's just your regular Christian. Sometimes it's a Mormons that'll walk from door to door and, you know, want to they're talk. They're called missionaries. Is it? Yeah. Okay. I actually, I, I almost was a missionary for a Mormon church. I actually really enjoy when they come to the door. Not because I, I, I don't mess with them or anything like that. It's just like, normally those people are like genuinely devoted, very nice, kind people. So like, mm -hmm. they're just enjoyable to talk to. And mm -hmm. it's, even though like, I have no religious anything whatsoever, it's still really nice to see how devoted and like, how like fulfilling it is for them. So I'll happily stand there and talk to them through it because it, it's just, like, a, a enjoyable. <laughs> Andrew, we are nihilist, Lebowski. Anywho. It's uh, true. I'm, a, I'm pretty nihilistic hey, with uh, hedonistic me. tendencies. Hey, Nathan, what'd you care about in the last 24 hours? Um, I had something. Uh, Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon. Is that actually anything? Like, I, I know it's, like, actually... It's, it's, it's supposed to be, like, a new story in the same area. So it's going to be, theoretically, like, black and white, too. Sure. Um, on top of that, they also announced Pokken DX for the uh, Wii. So that's really fucking cool, because the there's more characters. For the Switch, yeah, not the Wii. Because uh, there's more characters in that. Um, that, you know, just weren't there before. For instance, they have that fucking owl, Decidu Decidui. Yeah. And, and it was, oh god, I fucking love Decidui, first you, of all, that Pokemon. Do you think we will actually get a main Pokemon game on the Switch? We do! Gold and silver! So do you think we'll actually get a new main Pokemon game on the Switch? I, I, maybe not main Pokemon, alright? I feel like with their, with their, um... They're, they they haven't had a main Pokemon game on on any of the the actual consoles. Right. The closest yeah. the closest you have is uh, Colosseum and XD Gale of Darkness, and that's not really even. It's a story. I wouldn't count that as a main Pokemon game because you don't go around catching Pokemon in the wild. You go around stealing them from people to convert their hearts back into yeah, not yeah, yeah, being yeah. Shadow. Anyways, I feel like if they're gonna do it, they're either gonna do another type of side game like that. Because of the the super um, the super good reception it had, the super reception it had, um, or they're just going to do another stadium style game, which would be absolutely amazing, especially if they added because like Battle Revolution was fun as hell, and that was the fourth generation one, and it was essentially a a Coliseum game, but it was like really reduced in what you can do. You can either battle the Coliseums with rental Pokemon that they give you in teams, or which you had to unlock more rental Pokemon as you played, or you can go online and battle people online. There sure. was no mini games or or anything like that, which was kind of shitty. Because those mini games in call in stadium were amazing. Yeah, dude, I fucking I would play a lot of those stadium games over party, in some party games. Yeah. No. I However, I think one of the best fucking goddamn party games I've ever played, and people need to go out and purchase a Wii or use a Wii emulator specifically to play it, is Dokapon Kingdom. The Wii emulators are bad. I don't care. Dokapon Kingdom is amazing. It is like a Final Fantasy game jammed into a fucking, um, uh, fucking party style game. Oh yeah, it it has another. It has a different name. Oops. There's another name that it goes by. What is it also called? It has a different I don't know. I only know it by Dokapon Kingdom. It's also available on PlayStation 2. Is it? Yeah. Oh, it is. Oh, guys, that's even better. Get a PS2 emulator. Those I are, played it There's plenty I played of those it on the that Wii. Are good. Yeah, I played it on the Wii. Oh, okay, here's the other name. Dokapon King Udamu. Yeah, that, yeah, no. I must be thinking about something else. Oh, that's why I liked it so much. It's an Atlas game. And Atlas makes good games. Atlas does make good games. Interesting. Maybe I will never play it. It's really disappointing, I'll tell you. Well, you're really disappointing, not the game. The situation is really disappointing. Because Dokapon Kingdom is absolutely fucking amazing. It's episode 300! Yay! Woo! 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 How long have we been doing this now? A year and a half? More than that? Yeah, something like that. It'll be two years in November. Mm-hmm. We love all 12 of you who still listen to us. <laughs> hey, we're not doing that bad. We're not doing that bad. 
All right, all twenty-seven of you. Uh, like let let let, let let's let's grab the the things up. I I can't get accurate numbers off of Facebook, because Facebook like really likes to 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 float your jimmies real good by being like, oh, this person looked at it for half a second. They count as a view. I mean, shit. If that puts us up more, then sure. Sure. I mean, each episode is still downloaded anywhere from 20 to 30 times. Um, there's the viewers on YouTube who probably don't download and don't view it on uh, YouTube. And let's see. What are the, the fucking views right now on YouTube? Creator Studio. We have had 100 total views on YouTube since we started putting the videos on YouTube. Which is also the same time that we went live on... Uh, um facebook and uh, we're up to nine subscribers on youtube that's good yeah well you know i mean we just need to get the youtube out more just need to get that patreon money well i mean we need to get advertisements in general yeah that patreon money helps though patreon.com slash daily internet everybody if you'd like to help the show grow it's also a way that you will eventually hopefully make this actually our job we also want to start other shows to help increase, like, viewability and stuff, but shows cost money, and that sucks. Mm -hmm. Also, my shirt looks like a light blue on the screen, but it's definitely a light purple. Interesting. Yep. Anywho, I am really hungry and kind of Nice tired. to meet you, really hungry. Will, I'm... I'll fight you. I will fucking fight you. Wow. Normally, I'm the one that's that belligerent. Yeah, but... I'm really hungry like i was gonna eat before the show and i like looked around and they're like we really need to go to the store Same. but i i have no money like i have like 15 dollars i have two dollars and seven cents nice good keeping job. my accounts open good job buddy i had to put two dollars and fifty cents in physical like quarters into my account so that i could pay rent this month ow painful nathan's mm. painful all right everybody we're gonna get out of here though um if you enjoyed the show please share it on social media share uh, just you need to share the show or share our account or whatever we are found on instagram twitter and facebook all of those are at i read a cast leave us mm -hmm. a five star review on itunes to true google play that increases viewability to get new people to find the show Otherwise, you can call and leave us a voicemail, 508-738-2278. You can leave us an email, feedback.iredit at gmail.com, or, of course, support us on Patreon with your money. A dollar a month is all we ask. If you are willing to lend that support to us, patreon.com slash daily internet. And everybody, that is your 300th dose of the internet. I am Michael Schwann. And I'm Nathan Wood. And please remember, everybody. Don't, don't get, get it! Have a good day, everyone. Bye. -bye.